Hard contact lens or soft contacts? Daily disposable contacts or monthly ones? How do I know which one to choose? In this episode of OcuTalk, optometrist Roxana Hamadi tells us about the differences between hard and soft contact lenses, the different types there are of both categories, and how eye care professionals decide what contacts patients should be wearing. Dr. Hamadi? I want to talk to you. Not now, later. No, now. Hi, and welcome to OcuTalk. Uh, today we're going to be talking with Dr. Roxana Hermati. Uh, she is an OD with the Austin Contact Lens Institute in Austin, Texas. So she's uh, right down the street. Welcome, Dr. Hermati. How are you? Doing good. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's start with a, a short introduction. Uh, can you tell us about the uh, Austin Contact Lens Institute, how you got into optometry? Yeah, so I was always interested in optometry. I liked optics and physics a lot in undergrad. I was here at UT in Austin for undergrad. Um, and then I went to University of Houston, so not too far from Austin for optometry school. And even there, <laughs> I always liked contact lenses when I was there. It was always the interesting aspect of optometry. So I ended up doing a contact lens fellowship with the Texas Eye Research and Technology Center with Dr. Jan Bergmanson. Um, and then after that, I kind of just stayed in contacts. I went on to work with an NIH grant with specialty contact lenses um, and worked at University of Houston with specialty contact lenses. Then I went to Baylor and I did a pros scleral fellowship. And then I was there fitting specialty contact lenses as well. So see the pattern there. Um, <laughs> and then ultimately we started the Austin Contact Lens Institute where we provide, you know, kind of catered concierge care specifically related to specialty contact lenses. That's really neat. That, that's really neat. I'll tell you what, then I have a great question for you, uh, specifically about contact lenses. Why in the world are there so many contact lenses? <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot. Um, and it's really just because there's a lot of different needs for contact lenses. You know, not everybody wants to wear glasses. Some people can't do well with glasses. So we want to have these different options for, for different patients um, to get them to both have you know, good, clear vision, as well as good comfort, um, and to find the option that's going to give them, you know, reach all their goals, give them everything they need. So what are all the different types, right? Like, uh, you know, I, I've seen hard, I've seen soft, I've seen uh, scleral, I've seen toric, like, what, what does all that mean? Why are they, you know, what, what are all the differences here? You covered a lot of them. So the one we're probably most familiar with is soft contacts. I think about 90%, 89% of patients are in soft contacts which within that, there's also a breakdown. We have you know, hydrogel materials, silicone hydrogel materials, different types of refractive or prescription correction. So you know, spherical, astigmatism, uh, presbyopic corrections for patients that need to see well far away and up close. And then we have our uh, hard contact options. We have corneal GPs, scleral lenses, hybrid lenses, um, and then going back to soft, we have custom soft lenses and you know color prosthetic lenses. So lots of types of contact lenses that are out there. Um, I try to think both in the family of soft and hard. You, I, you know, you touched on something there. I I did not know that there was uh, custom soft contact lenses as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So what would those be for? So usually that's for patients that um, oftentimes they're their prescription doesn't fit in the parameters that are available in regular contact lenses. So there are limits to that with our standard soft lenses that most of us are familiar with. And so those extended parameters we can get in custom soft lenses. There's also patients that have certain eye conditions that they need a either a tighter or looser fit, a larger contact lens fit, um, that they need those type of contacts. In addition to, you know, we sometimes have infants that need contact lenses after being born with a congenital cataract and having cataract surgery. So those would be cases that would need a custom ordered contact lens, which will have you know custom curvatures, custom diameters, custom prescriptions. So really can kind of customize what they need for those specific conditions. I'll tell you, uh, that's another thing I had never heard of Dr. Hamadi. So yeah. what are they using contact lenses for in, uh, in surgery? Yeah, you were talking about infants and cataracts. That, that, that's interesting. Yeah. You know, babies are born with a congenital cataract. They're born with a cataract at time of birth. They'll have to undergo cataract surgery. Um, similarly to our 
elderly population also has to get cataract surgery. However, because they're so young and so small, they can't put a um, intraocular lens back to replace the, the natural lens that they've removed. Right. And so those are the babies that you see with the really thick glasses, those cute little babies with those big old glasses. But we take that same prescription and put it in contacts, which sometimes is a lot easier for baby to not take off and mom and dad don't keep putting it back. Um, and can sometimes give them better, better optical outcomes with that one, if that's what their, their pediatric specialist decides that they need. So you really have covered a lot of different types of contact lenses, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> Goodness gracious. Oh, I guess that's yeah. why it's the uh, Contact Lens Institute. <laughs> yeah. So, so let's talk a little bit. We touched on uh, soft and, and hard contacts, right? Uh, do you do anything with hard contacts yourself? Uh, I'll, I'll be honest, it's something I don't hear very often. I know they exist, but I don't hear it very often. Yeah, so we do a lot with hard contacts. So probably the one that people are most familiar with is a corneal gas permeable lenses. So those are those smaller hard lenses. They kind of sit on top of the cornea, float around on top of there. Um, those have been around for a long time. And I believe 70% of our gas permeable hard contacts are those corneal GP lenses. Um, then in addition to that, we have scleral lenses, which are the same gas permeable material, which if I haven't mentioned, that's, you know, it allows oxygen to go through the lens to get to the cornea. Um, and so those scleral lenses are made out of that same material, but they are a lot larger and they have a very different design. They don't touch the cornea at all. They land on the white part of the eye. And there's actually a layer of liquid that goes between the lens and the eye. Um, and I would say the third option would really be hybrid lenses, which are exactly the name sounds a little bit of a combo. So it's a hard contact in the middle with a soft skirt lens on the outside. When we're talking about hard contact lenses, like certainly it seems like soft would be preference, right? Like soft is better than hard, but what makes the difference? Is it is it that somebody has a certain power that's outside the scale of soft contacts or is there some other reason why they do it? Yeah, so it's like I said, soft contacts are definitely the most common option. They do have really good comfort, a lot of different options that we can pick from, but in some cases, Either they aren't able to get where they need optically. Um, you know, hard contacts do tend to have a little bit better optics. So some of our higher prescriptions, they do better with hard contacts. Patients that have really high astigmatism, um, some of do better with hard contacts. And certain eye conditions, like patients that have keratoconus or severe dry eye, will some do better with a hard contact than they will with a soft lens. One of the questions we wanted to ask is, are there any reasons why people won't be in soft lenses? And we've just got that answer, right? That uh, yes, there are some times where people can't get the optics that they're looking for out of a soft contact lens. I would imagine that that's probably the exception and not the rule. Yeah. Yeah. Most people can get what they need out of the soft contact, both with comfort and vision. But in those cases that can't, it's nice to have these options with a hard lens to get them the vision and comfort needs that, that they need to be able to wear a contact lens all day. Yeah, absolutely. So is there a difference in um, uh, comfort? Like, ha have you ever worn the hard contacts yourself? Like, uh... I have. Um, so there is a little bit of different of comfort. I do always say a soft lens is like a blanket. It's going to drape over whatever is there. Um, and it tends to be a little bit more comfortable. Our corneal hard lenses, those ones do land on the corneal tissue. So you do feel them a little bit more. They do take a little bit more of an adaptation period. But a lot of patients, once they adapt to it, they do really, really well. Um, and we do have really good fitting technologies now to get a really good fit um, to provide that best comfort type option. Um, and then with scleral lenses, because those don't touch the cornea at all, they just land on the white part of the eye, which is not as sensitive. Those ones actually have pretty good comfort. I've had patients that have had pretty comparable comfort with the scleral lens and the soft contact lens. That, that's very interesting. I, I'll tell you what. So let's let's stay on that topic for a second, because you know we've got hard lenses. We've talked about we've got soft contact lenses. We've talked about that. There's all kinds of different brands, right? And and the oxygen permeability makes a difference. Uh, you know, along with a lot of other factors. But another thing that I see a lot more is I see uh, daily contacts. I see monthly contacts. Uh, you know, I, I see uh, ones that uh, yearly contacts, right? Uh, like. Is there, is there a functional difference between those or is it purely based on convenience? So between the, so with the soft lens family, that's where we have our dailies, our two weeks, monthlies. Um, 
functionality wise, it just depends. The daily daily contact lens parameters are definitely expanding over time. So we do have some limits to that. Like some patients that need some higher prescriptions, um, they'll still fit in the category of our standard soft lenses, but not in a daily lens. Um, patients that need both um, astigmatic correction and presbyopic correction at the same time, those options aren't available in a soft lens currently, or no, sorry, in a daily disposable lens currently, but we can get it in a monthly lens. So there are the limits there, but I think outside of convenience, there's also a safety factor on why I would pick a daily disposable. So if you can get your parameters in a daily disposable lens, it tends to have the lowest risk of infection, um, the best patient compliance, um, especially if you aren't wearing a contact every single day. You know, we always say once that monthly lens is open, that one month starts. So even if you wear it four days out of the month, it still needs to be thrown away at the end of that one month versus if you're wearing a daily lens and you only wear it for those four days, you don't have to worry about it, how, how long it's storing in solution, if it's the right solution, if your case is clean, if you, you know, did all those steps correctly. Um, it's just a little bit safer and easier to kind of maintain your proper compliance with a daily disposable lens. So I, I might go a little off here, but you touched on something that I've always been curious about because people talk about this with daily disposable lens that, uh, you know, it could be said that they're safer because you're not dealing with them as, as often, right? But to some degree, right, it seems that you're certainly touching lenses often, right? And you're putting it, yeah. does that mean that the... Um, the risk from contact lens, if there is one, comes from how they're stored after they've been in the eye and how they're handled when they go in the eye. Would you say that that's true? You know, that is a, it's a little bit of both. So it can be from how it's stored. You know, um, it's not the proper solutions or the solutions aren't doing the proper type of disinfection. Um, there have been solutions that have been recalled in the past because they realized they weren't properly, you know, killing the bacteria that they need to. Um, there's also proper steps of making sure if you need to rub your contact, that you rub it properly, you always use fresh solution, all of those steps. So, you know, when you take your lens out at night to disinfect it, that's what it's doing. It's disinfecting it to make sure it's clean to put on the next day. But some bacteria likes to still fight that disinfection. Some just, you know, either doesn't kill it properly or it's just not being stored properly to provide that highest level of disinfection. Um, and then of course, once it's in the eye, if you happen to sleep in your contact, or you know, overwear them or scratch your eye, things like that. That's where that risk can also come in as well. So just be safe with them. <laughs> Do people ever get infections from uh, not properly cleaning their contact lenses? Yeah. So I actually have a little scar in my eye from um, a solution that ended up being recalled back in the day. I think I was in high school at the time, but it didn't properly disinfect. I got a little eye infection. I do have a little scar, but it's not affecting my vision. But especially with our clinic, because we do see a lot of those complex cases, there are a lot of patients that unfortunately do get infections from their contacts. Um, it is a medical device as much as, you know, cosmetically, it's nice to not, you don't want to wear glasses to not have to, but it is still a medical device that needs to be stored and maintained properly to make sure it's safe for your eyes. Dr. Hamadi, we're getting way off track here, but you've really touched on a nerve with me. So what, what like... That's bad to get an infection in the eye, yeah. obviously. Um, is there something that people should watch out for, um, you know, if, if that was happening? Like, uh, like clearly, like, infections don't just come out of nowhere, right? Like, they typically build up over time. So, you know, is, is there any warning signs we could look out for? Uh, nobody wants an infected eye. <laughs> yeah, usually you start getting things like, you know, eyes get red, watery, uncomfortable, um, painful, things like that. You're going to want to call your doctor right away. Um, remove your contacts as soon as possible if you are wearing them. Um, the best thing on the pages that you can do in addition to that is, I would say, quote, unquote, follow the rules, you know, um, maintain your yearly eye exams, make sure you're getting those contact lenses checked. Even as soon as it feels like, gosh, it's the same prescription again, everything's doing great. Like I said, it is a medical device and we want to make sure that it's, it's doing okay each time we see it. Um, storing it properly. Patients oftentimes, you know, want to just reuse the same solution over and over again. Uh, they don't want to just change it out and you know, have to keep refilling it, but that's like using the same sink water on Monday to do your dishes and using that same sink water until Friday. It's not as good and clean as it is day one. So make sure you follow those rules. And then if you do start to notice any signs of discomfort, irritation, things like that, to, to call your prescribing doctor and let them know um, and to go in for a visit and make sure that there's no, no infection starting. The earlier they can find it, the sooner they can treat it and get it under control. 
like I mentioned, I have a little scar in my eye, but it's so far off to the side. I don't think I even knew about it till I was in optometry school and my classmates pointed it out. So it <laughs> doesn't impact my life, doesn't affect my vision, but they caught it really early, treated it, and it's really good. So yeah, no, that's uh, you know that's very interesting. I, I guess you could say that generally speaking, your contacts should not be irritating you, right? Like once you've got them fit and they're in there, and you say that yeah. they're comfortable, there should not be a new occasion where they become uncomfortable. And if they are, that could be a problem. Hmm. Yeah, there shouldn't be any redness, shouldn't be watering, shouldn't be painful, light sensitive, blurry, anything like that. You're going to want to be seen as soon as possible. Absolutely. So. We talked about a lot of different contact lenses, uh, and uh, Dr. Hamadi, you seem to have a contact lens for every different uh, variation here. Is there ever an occasion where somebody just can't, there is no contact lens for you, right? Like, is there an occasion like that? You know, there is. Um, there is. Sometimes there just are limits to what we can do, um, whether it's optically, fit-wise, um, you know, sometimes we can't, like, for example, I mentioned having lenses that have astigmatism correction and presbyopic correction in one contact. That's only been out now for a few years. So if you were here 10 years ago, we didn't have that option. So that would have been a limit for you to have that correction in the contact. Now there's other ways we could try to correct you, but that could have been a limit there. Um, so there's always limits to technology. There are sometimes limits to how you can properly maintain and care for it. Like I said, it is um, it is a medical device. It has to be cared for properly, maintained properly. And if you're able to do that, um, you know, to get them on and off correctly and all that, it just might not be the best choice. Um, but yeah, so those are kind of some of the limits. <laughs> Well, no, I, I tell you what, you, you've uh, laid a lot of interesting knowledge on us today. Uh, you know, we have talked about contact lenses on this channel multiple times, but every time that I talk to somebody, there's uh, new and interesting things. But I think what people don't realize is that, uh, you know, it, it looks simple, but in a lot of cases, especially with toric lenses and things like that, it's complicated. It is a complicated device. Uh, so, you know, there's, there's a lot more to it than just, uh, finding, a, you know, a lens that fits. There's a lot more to it from what I'm, I'm hearing from you. Yeah. There's a lot more to it as far as the, the fit, the vision, there's a lot of factors that go into finding the best contact for each patient. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I, we've covered a lot of information here, Dr. Kamadi. Thank you so much. Uh, is there anything else you want to cover today about contact lenses? Anything else that's, uh, on top of mind? No, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I feel like, yeah, we did cover a lot. Um, you know, like I mentioned before, contact lenses are an evolving technology. So we're talking about there's some things that there's limits to right now. There's can always be something new that comes out later. So as a patient or as a doctor, if it's something that's not an option today, just, you know, give it a few years. It can be an option later. Um, keep in mind, there are those other options. You know, as soon as we're kind of stuck in our typical soft lens, which is works for most patients, but we're we're you know, looking at those options there, but don't forget that there are other options out there that could work just as well, if not better for certain patients. Um, and then, you know, we are talking about OcuSoft here. It is a contact that is fitting on the ocular surface. So you wanna make sure you're looking at the cornea, the lids, the lashes. I have a lot of patients that they have discomfort and it's just that they have a lot of just debris in their lashes and we need to just get that really clean. So make sure you maintain and check all of those things um, in addition to the contact when you're assessing your fit and looking at your patient size. Absolutely. Well, Dr. Hamani, thank you so much. Uh, this was a very interesting conversation. Uh, I always enjoy talking to doctors. They always uh, teach me new things I didn't learn. Uh, so with that, I think we'll wrap up here today. So Dr. Hamani, thank you so much for being with us and I hope we'll talk again soon. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs>